I watched Wintergarten's first marble machine video a while back and was just blown away. The amount of creativity and engineering that went into making that machine was just incredible. The thing that really put it over the top was just how good the song was too. I think he owes me a couple hundred views on that video. Now Martin has been designing and building his next marble machine which seems like it's going to be on a whole other level and it's been a ton of fun following along in his videos. I was so surprised a couple months ago when I got an email from his team asking if I would be interested in fabricating a couple parts for the Marble Machine X. I have this relatively small YouTube channel out here on my remote farm in Oregon and they somehow knew of me and were confident in me enough I guess to ask if I was interested in contributing. I jumped on the opportunity, of course. I was working mostly with Marius, who sent me the 3D model of the machine and the parts I was to make. The first part they needed were corner gussets on the lower frame to help stiffen things up. This was going to be pretty straightforward. There were just parts to be cut on the CNC table. The second part was a bit more complex. It was ruled cross bracing that matches the curve of the programming drum. It was a little intimidating jumping in on this because I wasn't going to have the marble machine in front of me to test fit pieces. I was going to have to study the 3D model and make sure the parts I made were to the exact same measurements and dimensions. I got the CNC plasma table loaded up with a sheet of quarter inch material and got to cutting. I don't know what the heck I did. I must have loaded the wrong G-code file or something, but the table cut out something totally different. So embarrassing. I had no idea what that was. I reloaded the file, and this time it cut what it was supposed to. After the parts were cut, I cleaned up all the edges with the flat disc on the angle grader. The part I was most nervous about on this project was rolling the tubing to the exact radius in the 3D model. I felt the only way I was going to be able to accomplish this would be to route out a jig that I could match it to. I clamped down an old 2x12 to the table and surfaced the top side. I flipped it over and ran the program for the underside, which surfaced at first and then cut out the pieces that will form the rough shape that the jig could be cut out of.
To design the jig, I made a copy of the cross bracing, isolated one side, and leveled it out. Then I was able to copy some of the arcs and build the jig around the bracing. I imported my SketchUp model into VCarve to set up the toolpaths and preview how it'll look before lastly exporting the G code for the CNC routing table. I used a half inch end mill to pocket out the area that the bracing will sit. And then step down to a quarter inch end mill to profile around the outside of the jig, cutting it out of the form. With the jig done now, I had run out of excuses to keep putting off the rolling of the tubing. I narrowed up the dies to match the one inch square tubing I was gonna use and started running the piece back and forth in the ruler, cranking down on the sooner ruler with the bottle jack as it went. Once I started getting close, I checked it against the jig on each pass. I figured that if I rolled it past the radius I was shooting for, I was screwed and I'd be starting over on a new piece. But luckily that didn't happen, and I thought it matched the jig really well, and was able to pull it off again on the second piece. I used the bandsaw to cut off the ends of the tubing that wasn't rolled. This type of ruler always has a little bit of waste. I incorporated cut lines into the design of the jig that I could use to mark the ends of the rolled tubing. I also marked the location of the connecting plate in the middle that all four pieces of the cross bracing will bolt to. The reason it was designed to be bolted together was just to keep the cost down of shipping the parts all the way to France, where Martin and the marble machine live. I thought it looked pretty cool too. Form meets function. I cut the ends off with the angle grinder and check their accuracy. Marius had said, hey, just a warning, there's some pretty gnarly cutoff angles coming your way on this thing, and he was telling the truth, especially on the top, which would need an additional second cut as well. The X-plate needed to match the bend of the tubing. And the easiest way I could think to do this was to clamp it down to one of the scrap ends, heat it up with a torch, and then force the ends down to match with more clamps. Once I had both ends clamped down, 
I removed the middle clamp and heated that area up, giving it a chance to match the curve too. I let it completely cool before turning it and repeating the process for the other direction. I usually mark the holes for bolts with the plasma cutter, but I keep them undersized so I can later more accurately drill them out to their actual size. I used a taper bit to countersink the backside so the flathead cap screws I decided to use would sit flush. I marked the location of the holes and center punched them before drilling them out. It took me a while to come up with a plan on how to put threads into the one inch square tubing. I thought about just tapping them, but decided there wasn't enough material for it to be strong and could easily strip when we were tightening down the bolts. Then I thought about welding in some thicker material to the inside of the tubing that I could tap through. I almost went this route, but then I had the idea to just weld in some coupling nuts, which I thought would work pretty well. This would give you threads all the way through and should be good and strong after welding the top and the bottom. Plus, if I bolted it to the X-plate while I welded it, all the holes would line up perfectly. I had to be really careful welding it, doing my best to stay away from the threads on the inside. It ended up working out really well. I left the weld bead on the bottom but needed to clean up the top so it still sit down flat on the plate. Once I had everything welded, I cut the square tubing into two pieces and repeated the process for the other leg. I was really surprised how close it measured up with the model and how well it sat flat on the table. I welded on the bottom brackets. They wanted a couple pegs on these to help line up the bolt hole which I thought was a smart idea. I just welded a long bolt into place and then cut off the extra. So it was a short nub. Moving on to the upper brackets, I first got them drilled out the size. Martin wanted to be able to pull a couple pins on the top of the bracing and pivot it up and out of the way so he could have good access to the programming wheel behind it. I tried clamping the pins down, but that didn't work very well. So I just went ahead and tacked it and carefully checked that it hadn't pulled up on the opposite side. I decided I wasn't going to weld the upper brackets on because I just knew there was no way I was going to get them aligned right. I really thought they should be bolted onto the machine and then welded to the cross bracing in place. I plugged the ends of the square tubing to give it a more finished look. And the last thing to do was make the second cut on the top ends. 
The only way I could figure to do this was to just carefully copy the measurements over and draw connecting lines between the points. I knew it wasn't going to be perfect, but I was just hoping it was close enough that small gaps could be filled when the upper bracket was welded on when it was all mounted to the machine. And that was it. It was time to break it all down and get it ready to ship. One of my favorite parts of making YouTube videos has been getting to connect with people around the world that have similar interests as mine. Not in a million years would I have thought I'd be fabricating metal parts to send to a Swedish guy living in France who's building a music marble machine that he plans to go on tour with around the world. Speaking of that, Hey Martin, you gotta make a stop in Portland. I promise I'll be there moshing in the front row. I really hope all these parts fit. Like I said, it was a little intimidating knowing how precise they needed to be and not being able to test fit pieces. If you never see these parts pop up in his videos, that probably means they didn't work out. I did my best, but he should know that this isn't a machine shop. It's a farm shop.